There's some gift shops too. Gift shops. There's a, there's a little bar if you're into that. Mm -hmm. And ice cream. Oh, no. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Dustin. And I'm Alora. And this is Likely Lost. And in today's video, we're gonna give you a one day itinerary in Glacier National Park. But before we do that, we need you to like and subscribe. It's for our cat Mochi. Mm -hmm. She's gonna get one treat for every like, unless it gets ridiculous. Yeah. So in our last video, we got eight likes. So we're gonna give Mochi eight treats. Here it is. So give this video a thumbs up if you want to contribute to Mochi's treats. And yeah. Let's go. So for this itinerary, we're gonna start off in the west side of the park. Um, this is where we've been the whole time. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of like what we could recommend somebody do. This would be the ultimate day coming from this side of the park. Yeah. So start out waking up really early. You want to get to the parking lot super early um, because there's a ton of people that come to this park. Um, this summer and last summer there were reservations, ticket reservations. So the day before, make sure that you, get, you have access to going to the Sun Road. Um, but yeah, wake up early eat breakfast at home. Don't worry about going to any of the breakfast places. You don't have a lot of time. You have one day. Yep. So eat breakfast at home, pack your lunch um, in your like day pack for hiking and go on to going to the Sun Road from the west side entrance. So going to the Sun Road is the, the big road when you go through Glacier National Park. It is takes roughly an hour a little bit over to actually travel the entire road from west to east mm -hmm. um, depending the, on the traffic too depending on the traffic what kind of people you have out there mm -hmm. um, halfway about halfway you'll, you'll actually be at Logan's Pass which is where we're actually going for our first stop mm -hmm. um, the road is beautiful and you'll get to see a lot of uh, nice things along the way mm -hmm. but you want to get in the park I would probably recommend no later than like 530 like entering the park Mm -hmm. to actually get to Logan's Pass because the parking lot there fills up fairly fast. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you really get a spot after like 7, 7, 10. I think it's probably about filled up at that point. Yeah, and we should say like we're filming this right now in 2022 and there's construction on the west side of going to the Sun Road. So um, the road actually doesn't open this year until 6 a.m. But I like when we went over to Logan Pass and did the road, uh, we were in line at 5.30 just to make um, sure we had a spot yeah because people will line up all the way to outside of the park i think mm -hmm. so yeah so just get there early depending on what year you're going you know go on the nps website check out the road situation and um, just get there as early as you can so we got in early we're all the way at logan's pass parking lot there's a couple different hikes to do the first thing i want to make sure you know about because this is not our recommendation is highline trail mm -hmm. that's the big hike that's Everybody, the big one everybody's gonna suggest Highline Trail and it is a beautiful trail um, but it's very long if you're planning on doing an out and back it's gonna take all day that's gonna be your whole that's your whole glacier experience if you want to do Highline Trail definitely it's worth it um, mm -hmm. but that's all that's well, that's gonna sap you that's gonna be a lot of your energy lost a lot of your time used up but we recommend doing another trail this is the Oberlin mm -hmm. uh, Oberlin Peak is that what it's actually called uh, Mount Oberlin Trail. Um, it is a peak. It's supposed to be the easiest peak in the park and I would say that it was pretty, it's not, I wouldn't say it's easy like for a beginner, but it is it's definitely like, not hard. Yeah, it's, it's not, not hard. hard. Um, that would be, a, that's an awesome one to do. It gives you a little bit more of um, a little bit of climbing. You do like two slots. Definitely worth it for the views at the end because you, you're on top of a mountain. Yeah. Um, there is a, a nice spot to sit and just look around and just observe everything. As you're going up the side of the mountain, the views just get better and better. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the parking lot way off and then you see all of like heading out to West or East Glacier. You mm -hmm. see most of the park out that way. Yeah, all the meadows and the mountains and all of that. I do want to say, even though we are saying that it's an easy hike for a peak, it's still a peak. You should. It's going to be really windy up there. There's. It's going to be really steep, and just like be careful, you know, on, on any of the hikes that you do. Um, have the right shoes. Uh, we're really happy to have poles going down yes. the other end. And also, just a little. This is a very tip, important tip. A tip for Oberlin is, go, the clockwise 
way. So you're gonna wanna go up the saddle way to the left and then come down the switchback way. There's also another hike at Logan Pass called Hidden Lake Overlook. And then you can also go down and um, go up close to the lake. That hike is a little bit easier. Um, more accessible. Um, so that's definitely an option if you don't want to go up and do a peak um, or do something long like Highline. So yeah, there's a few different options, but for us, I think the best hike that's at Logan Pass is Overland. So once you're done your hike in Logan Pass, we suggest you go back to the west side on going to the Sun Road um, and just skip the east side and St. Mary altogether. Just, just because, for now. Just, just because you have one day. You can always come back and do that later. But you only have one day here. Go back to the west side and um, off of going to the Sun Road, there is the trailhead for Avalanche Lake and Trail of, the, Trail of the Cedars and then it leads into Avalanche Lake. That's a really easy um beautiful hike it's one of dustin's like favorite hikes i think i think it's good and i think it'd be good to do it on the way back um mm -hmm. because you know whatever hike you decide to do at logan's pass that's the busiest place in the park mm -hmm. so you'll do your hike there and see how you're feeling the trail of cedars is an awesome like boardwalk experience it's easy for everybody to do mm -hmm. um and if you still have plenty of energy avalanche lakes is an awesome trail to do yeah and it's not i think it's like six and a half so going on seven miles is that what it is yeah yeah it's not and too it's bad it's relatively flat and you follow the um mcdonald creek and it's really cool the creek um and the lake is too but then, <laughs> but then um, it gives your toes a break from, and your feet a break from doing your hike at Logan Pass, you know, cause you'll drive back, have a little bit of break and then you can go and hike your next hike. Yeah. Once you're done with your hike over at the Trail of Cedars or Avalanche Lake, whichever one you decided to do, I would recommend coming back to Apgar Village. In Apgar, you can do rentals. You can get some kayaks, get a little motorboat. Mm -hmm. um, you could actually there's some gift shops too. gift shops there's uh there's a little bar if you're into that mm -hmm. and ice cream is, oh, <laughs> no, I, was say, I was gonna say ice cream <laughs> <laughs> there's ice cream too but <laughs> but you can actually go and get like a beer or a cocktail and like walk around the lake and stuff like that too it's like vegas kind of no it's not like vegas but like it's kind of weird to like that you can do that walk around with your drink you yeah, know it's outside nice. the restaurant but it is nice yeah it's a good way to wrap up your day i mean you've mm -hmm. been out there hiking you 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 potentially you've been to the top of a mountain mm -hmm. yeah potentially been down to avalanche lake mm -hmm. you've probably walked the trail of cedars now you're gonna wrap going it up to the sun road too. Going, mostly going to the sun road you've seen a lot of beautiful things today it's time to wrap it up doing some normal things so if you want to mm -hmm. go out and just hang out on a boat shopping drinking yeah, do, do your normal Skipping stuff. Skipping stones. It's time to relax before you get out of the park. And Apgar Village is, um, I don't know if it's iconic, but it's definitely something you need to check out while you're there. Mm -hmm. And then if you are looking for a place to eat dinner after this long day and you get out of the park and you're going to maybe like Columbia Falls, there's a really cool restaurant on Nucleus Avenue that's kind of like Columbia Falls, his little downtown. It's called Gunsight Saloon. Um, They've got just your regular like bar and grill type of food, but in the summertime, every single night they have music, live music. So it's really cool to just go there, listen to music, hang out. The place is always like popping and packed. So, and it's, it's just really good too. You can have fun with just like you and your significant other, just mm -hmm. you, you can hang out with friends. Mm -hmm. It's they, definitely it's set and up. To, and kids too, you know, there'd be like parents like dancing with their kids and the little, like by the stage outside and everything. It's, it's great place for all kinds of people. Everybody's there. Yeah. So thanks for watching our video about a one day itinerary here in Glacier National Park. This is exactly what we'd recommend to anybody with one day to spend in the park. Yeah, and definitely subscribe and hit the bell notification. Um, we're probably gonna come up with some more itinerary videos, three day, week long itinerary for Glacier National Park. So if you're interested in that, subscribe and hit the bell notification. All right, bye guys. Peace.